Hello, Kidney Warriors! James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is video number 91 in my journey from kidney failure to feeling kidney great. And this is day number five of Dadvice TV's Kidney Health Week, where we are doing a live show every single day, the first week of August. And let me tell you guys, boy, we got another great guest with us today. But let me tell you guys a little bit of a backstory first. If you are brand new here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate that. And that way, every time I upload brand new content, you'll get a notification. You can be one of the first people to see it. Now, if you don't know who I am, I was diagnosed just under two years ago with stage five kidney failure. My original GFR was an eight. Oh, not a good number. I had no clue. I had kidney problems. I was eating unhealthy, doing all the things you're not supposed to do. But I worked with my doctor. I worked with a renal dietitian. I worked with a lot of doctors. I listened to what they said. And we focused on diet, lifestyle changes, a lot of nutrition. And I was able to reduce the burden on my kidneys. They're no better today than they were when I spent a week in the ICU. They're still the same. Maybe a little less inflamed now but I have gone from stage five to stage four and now stage three. But most importantly, because those of you who know me, I really don't care about my GFR. What I care about is how I feel, my quality of life. I have zero symptoms, I feel great. As a matter of fact, when we're done with this, I'm going for a bit of a jog. I'm gonna go try to get three miles in after we're done here because the weather is finally nice and cool here in Cincinnati. Now, today, with us, we have a nephrologist. Oh, you guys love it when we have nephrologists on there. Uh, we have a very special one. We have Dr. Crocker, and let me bring him up here. Hey, Dr. Crocker, how you doing? Hi, James, thanks for having me. It's great to be with you. Awesome, tell everyone a little bit about you because they probably don't know who you are. True, true. Uh, my name is Dave Crocker. I, uh, I grew up in Ohio, uh, where James is residing now, and went to uh, undergrad uh, close to him at the University of Cincinnati, uh, on to Ohio State for medical school. Uh, did my residency training at Northwestern in Chicago. Uh, ended up in New York City at Cornell uh, for my nephrology fellowship, and now back uh, to Chicago, and I am a practicing nephrologist uh, here in Chicago with a big uh, single specialty group, meaning I work with uh, over 100 nephrologists from Chicago and uh, around Northwest Indiana. <clears throat> and so the bulk of my day is spent taking care of uh, dialysis patients, inpatients in the hospital, as well as an outpatient clinic for patients like you, James, that have uh, stage three to four chronic kidney disease and trying to either prepare for dialysis or hopefully more like with your stories where you are improving or at least keeping things in check. Yep. Yeah. I am. I, I am so happy that I listened to my doctors and that I got to where I am now. I was given by, by following their instructions and listening to them and doing what they said, I was given a second chance at life. And I am so happy that I have been able to at least avoid dialysis for now. And at least, you know, I'm delaying it at the least and maybe even for a long time. My doctors say, hey, stay healthy keep an eye on your blood pressure, keep an eye on your weight, your blood sugar, do some exercise, eat right, and you'll be pretty good. All right, so uh, we got a bunch of people saying hi here to you. <laughs> they love it when we get a nephrologist in here. Excellent. All right, so I wanted to start off talking a little bit about my favorite renal multivitamin, Pro Renal Plus D. You guys know I take this every day. My first experience with Pro Renal Plus D was with my renal dietitian. It was actually probably my second renal dietitian because my insurance doesn't like me, but I love going and seeing dietitians and I find ways to get it covered with my insurance. <laughs> but my, my second one, she recommended this because I was struggling with anemia and I was having trouble getting my labs to look pretty good. She recommended that to me. I went to a local kidney walk here in Cincinnati and I saw a setup and I met the team behind this. They're down the street in Dayton. I saw Great them. At, yeah, I saw them at other events and they are awesome people. 
And when I told him, hey, I'm doing a kidney health week, would you guys like to come on and talk about Pro Renal Plus D? They're the ones that arranged for Dr. Crocker to be here. So we owe them a huge thanks for getting him, getting him here with us. Now, how are you connected to the team behind Pro Renal Plus D? I actually uh, met uh, the man behind Pro Renal who started the company. We did fellowship together at Cornell. Um, so John and I met uh, there. And I will admit, when I first got into practice, uh, you know, there's so much going on and so much you worry about with the big, big things, as you know, like diabetes, blood pressure and whatnot, that um, I knew about vitamins for myself, but I, uh, that was further down the list for me in terms of uh, kidney care. But then, you know, the more comfortable you get and the longer I was in practice, I thought, you know, I, I really have to keep a well-rounded and a complete whole body approach. Um, and so around that time is when John contacted me about the vitamin. Uh, so I've been uh, around and with nephroceuticals since the beginning. Um, and it's a big part of my practice and my partners are all involved with it and in terms of education, things like that. So, but it all, uh, it all happened, uh, like many good stories, James, it happened on a basketball court in New York city <laughs> and on the mean streets in New York. I, uh, started playing basketball with John and he's a great guy and a good friend. And, um, that's how I got started. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I love the people behind pro renal plus D it has been a part of my treatment strategy as I have gone from pretty much being told I had zero chance of getting past GFR 13 to where I am today. People in the street are shocked when I tell them I have kidney disease and I tell them how close I came to, Oh, having a completely different future when I was laying there in the ICU. Now, a question about renal multivitamins. Why, what's the difference between Pro Renal Plus D and the kind that we can go out to CVS or Walgreens, just grab off of the shelf? Why shouldn't we just get some of those instead of this? Well, uh, a couple things. Uh, the straightforward doctor answers always know what you're putting in your body, mm -hmm. um, which is always one of the risks, you know, medicines we can prescribe, but one of the risks with vitamins and supplements is that people can go into a GNC or a Walgreens uh, or Whole Foods, anything like that, and just pick all sorts of supplements. And so uh, the reason you don't go as a patient with chronic kidney disease and just picks things off the shelf is more uh, maybe not for what you're missing in a vitamin. Uh, it's more of what you're putting in that you don't need. Um, so specifically some of the big ones, uh, from a pro renal versus something different, uh, is calcium. Uh, that's one of the biggest things to me. Uh, I have been involved, uh, with, uh, CKD and phosphorus management, uh, since the get go, obviously that's a big part mm -hmm. of our life. And I used to do some speaking for, uh, one of the phosphorus binding companies, uh, just to try and get the word out about some of the detrimental, uh, issues with uh, CKD patients ingesting too much calcium, yep. uh, which can be a real problem. Uh, we understand most of the science behind it, but not everything, but CKD patients, uh, chronic kidney disease and end stage renal disease patients, they calcify much faster than the rest of us do that don't have kidney problems. And studies have shown that the more calcium you put in, in supplementation, the faster that occurs. And so uh, as a CKD patient, uh, it's very rare that you really need calcium. You tend to get enough in your diet. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you don't want to be supplementing. So for me, one of the big ones is that any supplement you buy will be uh, have calcium, which you don't need. Yep. Uh, might have phosphorus, which you don't need. Uh, I know you and I were discussing before about your potassium. A lot of dial or dialysis and CKD patients have high potassium and don't need that potassium, so there's none in pro renal. Um, and the nice, the best thing about it is that you know, unlike a Centrum or other multivitamin that kind of may just be put together based on data for the general public or old data, you know, pro renal was designed using real studies on real people, transplant patients with CKD, with the bulk of it, but not all of it. But it's actually you know, there's some science behind it and it's been used clinical data on real people. So it's not on lab animals or anything like that, where the dosage um, was designed and picked based on what the needs are for a specific patient with chronic kidney disease. <clears throat> uh, the other thing about not 
just grabbing any vitamin is it's it's quite well rounded. Uh, since everyone knows Centrum, that's usually the name I compare mm-hmm. to when I talk to patients. I say, hey, you know, think of it like a Centrum plus a D supplement plus or minus omega three. Um, that's all been designed specifically for you because every patient's different. But when you, in terms of chronic kidney disease and end stage renal disease, you're kind of in the same, you're kind of in the same boat when it comes to micronutrient needs. So it's nice and balanced. It's got everything from A to Z. It's got the trace minerals like a Centrum might, uh, minus I believe chromium because that's had some negative effects. So that's another one that you don't want in your multivitamin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's just got things in the right dose. Uh, and then I know we'll talk about vitamin D a little bit. It's got a higher dose of D than what you'll get in your Centrum or your other uh, generic multivitamin. Um, so it's been designed um, in general for chronic kidney disease patients uh, using real data and real patients. And I think that's uh, the power of that combined with the fact that uh, you're not going to put things in your body that your body doesn't need and might make things worse. Yep. I think that's the that's the biggest thing people get surprised about when I look, because a lot of people take not just the Centrum, they'll bring in their multivitamin and four or five other things. And when I start oh. looking at it and saying, well, you know, you're on three times as much of this, this can cause, you know, this might lead to kidney stones in terms of something like vitamin C. Um, there's a lot and people get shocked. They're like, what? And I mean, I've had people just throw their stuff in the trash. Yep. Because I know, you know, all this stuff costs money. So a lot of times I'll say, you know what, you know, if you want to save your money and, you know, finish this bottle, you know, finish what you've got, you know, then move over to pro renal. And a lot of people are like, oh, no, after what you just told me, um, here, my bottles are going in the trash. I'll take uh, the sample and, and I'm going to I'm going to order today. Yeah, that's pretty much how I was uh, when I came home from the ICU. I went through the entire kitchen <laughs> and if it wasn't kidney friendly for me, I got rid of it. You know, the the boxes of food that I were packed with preservatives and all this other stuff that I just wasn't going to eat. I just got it out of there. I went through my cupboards where all my my vitamins and things were, and I just got rid of them and started fresh because I didn't want to put any additional stuff that I didn't need in me. Um, I wanted to do everything as best as I could. Now, a few people have asked, and I'm going to answer their questions real quick, about the size of the ProRenal tablets. Now there are two different sizes. The one without vitamin or without omega-3 is teeny tiny. It looks like a speck, like a little tiny child's 81 milligram um, aspirin. It is the tiniest little thing. Good comparison. Yeah. The uh, one with the omega-3, which I take, and I take two of these every day, it is a larger gel tablet. And he just swallow those. I swallow them both at the same time. I have no problem with it with some water. You may want to just do one at a time with these. Um, and also, I forgot to mention earlier, guys, we're going to do a giveaway. And we're not just doing a regular giveaway. Let me bring it up here. Here's what you guys are going to do. You're going to share this broadcast. And you're going to tag it with the hashtag MyProRenal. And every time you share it, you're entered in for a random drawing and every day for the next two weeks, we are going to pick somebody and send them a free bottle list, an entire month supply. And the team behind pro renal plus D has been so nice. They said, Hey, wherever we can ship it, we're shipping it too. in the past. I've done some giveaways. It's been limited only to people in the United States. As long as your country allows the import of multivitamins, we're good. We'll send this out to you guys. So don't forget, share this and tag it with hashtag my pro renal. That helps get people to realize, hey, there's pro reno out there. Learn a little bit about it and you could win. And there is no limit to the number of times you share this or where you want to share it. I even search WhatsApp, all those. Let's get it out there and get this news out there. All righty. Um, now, my renal dietitian was huge on trying this and she gave me a sample bottle and I, I got it. I took them. I was like, yep, this works. No upset stomach or nothing. And I started taking them as a, um, nephrologist. Do you recommend most of your patients take a renal multivitamin or, or what do you look for when you do recommend that they take a renal multivitamin? 
Well, you know, vitamins are uh, there can become uh, quite a personal thing. You know, some people are very anti vitamins. Some people, like I said, they come in taking three, four different things. So I sort of just start by seeing where they're at. You know, most people take something and then we get into the discussion. Mm-hmm. Some people shut it down right away when they say no. They're like, no, 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 I don't want a vitamin. Some people, um, since not all and uh, not, you know, it's rare that you could get insurance coverage. I don't want to misspeak, but uh, most of the time it's out of your own pocket. It's really reasonably priced, especially versus grabbing stuff off the shelf. Oh, yeah. But some people shut it down from a financial standpoint. You know, I tend um, the area I practice in is. Um, uh, definitely on the lower socioeconomic end. So for some people, they're just like, well, it sounds good, but you know, I don't, I don't have it in the budget. But for most people, um, uh, it's usually, I would say probably two thirds of my patients already take something. And then we get into a discussion about it. Most people make the transition uh, from there. Uh, So I tend to bring it up with everybody, but I don't uh, for people that I can tell, you know, have no interest, you know, most patients, they're coming back. You don't just see your nephrologist once, as you know. Mm-hmm. So we we'll, we have further discussions about it. But a lot of people are taking something and most times they don't tell you. So uh, getting involved with ProRenal has been good because it's gotten me to start asking people um, much more than I used to. And it's surprising because, you know, people say, what do you take? And they fill out their their stuff. They only fill out their prescription medicines. Yeah mention, you know, I mean, there's some people out there that, you know, like, oh, oh, you want to know that stuff? And they'll list like seven, eight bottles worth of stuff. Ooh, um, it's it's so a meal. It's breakfast. It is, you know, and they really <laughs> get into it. And so for some things I say, hey, listen, you know what? You like your coenzyme Q10 and the cardiologist told you to take that. That's fine. Keep taking that. That's not in the vitamin. You know, we help, always have a handout that we give them uh, that lists everything in there. And then I can see what they're on and we can kind of gauge from there. But for most people, it's nice because a lot, most everyone out there complains how many pills they take. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. someone that comes in on a vitamin and a D supplement and things like that, they realize, oh, I can just streamline down to one purchase, one pill or two. They'll take that every day. And so like you had said, also that Pro Reno with Omega-3, that was a good design by the company. Yep. You know, fish oil, yes, fish oils can be gigantic. So rather than have people get turned off and be like, well, I'd like to take it, but it's so huge, I can't swallow it. They broke it into two capsules. So I always go through and, you know, with the patients, make sure they know the difference that, you know, you need two of the fish oil because otherwise you're getting half of what you need. And that's why it was designed versus the one with the non, non-omega-3. non Yeah, and I and that's the version I take is with the omega-3. Uh, no burps, no fishy taste, which is very common with the fish oils. Now, so someone asks, what does the fish oil do? How do I know if I need this version or the little tiny, tiny one that doesn't have any omega-3? Do you want the short, shortest, succinct answer? (laughs) Whatever is the easiest. (laughs) Well, it's very easy. I will tell you, uh, study after study shows, and I know if someone's really into research, they might say, well, maybe not this small study. The short version is, is that People that take omega-3 have less cardiac events than people that don't. It's that simple. So, yes, it matters with some of your comorbidities, but most people aren't walking around just with kidney problems, nothing else. You know, almost everyone's tied in with either hypertension, diabetes, Mm -hmm. some kind of heart disease. So um, the heart and the kidney are very aligned in terms of, you know, what's making things worse, what's helping and get things better. So it's rare that someone is walking around with chronic kidney disease and has just a perfectly normal 100% stone cold cardiovascular system. So not me, you, my heart you is know, not happy. For, for your well-informed patients and your educated patients that know their, know their labs and whatnot, especially if you have protein in the urine, if you have protein in the urine, your risk of cardiovascular death and disease is higher just by having that presence of protein. So essentially, you know, short of maybe someone that's got a just a random, you know, primary what we call autoimmune lesion in the kidney, most people with CKD, chronic kidney disease, they have some form of cardiovascular disease, even if it's just the accelerated calcification we talked about. So Mm -hmm. short answer, everyone um, with kidney disease would benefit from omega three in the sense, you know, it's nothing's a guarantee. But right. multiple studies have shown people that take omega-3 have less cardiac events than people that don't. And another thing to um, 
tell you just about, um, I don't know if you know the company and the vitamin, um, ProRenal, the makers of ProRenal also make a cardiac vitamin called Cardiamin that I actually have some of my patients take instead. They come in with a real significant cardiovascular history. And what's interesting is the data behind micronutrients with cardiac uh, issues and with kidney issues are very similar. So the vitamins are almost identical. Um, I know there's 2,000 of D in the cardiamin versus 1,000 for kidney patients. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe there's 2,000 of omega-3 instead of 1,000 because some of the cardiovascular literature has um, pushed for higher dosing. And I believe, uh, if I'm speaking correctly, there wouldn't be any vitamin K in the cardiac vitamin for all those patients that are on blood thinners like Coumadin, Warfarin. But otherwise, they're quite similar. And it's kind of tells you the parallel that exists between the cardiac system, the renal system, and just the interplay together. So I do yep. have some patients on um, cardiamin instead of uh, pro-renal. And lesson in that is that if there was someone out there that thought, well, I want a little more D or I want a little omega-3 because I read it, you know, you could take the cardiamin uh, and you'd really be getting similar things to the pro-renal, um, both great approaches. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. And my wife takes another multivitamin they make for her stomach. She has like IBS. Yeah. Um, she eats, she can eat a, a, a nibble of a piece of bread. She's got inflammation and problems and she absolutely loves it. Uh, yeah. she still stays away from a lot of bread and other products. Um, uh, but it's helped her. She feels it's helped her stomach. And I believe it has some iron in it too, which one thing she was a little low on. Um, and now we have a few people asking about how do I order this? Um, there are links on Dadvice TV. If you want to go to dadvicetv.com slash pro renal, it'll take you right to the page with the links to order it. There is a coupon code to save some money. I do not get a commission. This is a real discount for you guys. Um, let me go to a few of these other questions we had in here. Some of the questions yeah, are coming I, from. I could, I could hold this up if, if, where's my camera? There you go. If there's a, a promo code, that's my group, Nanny, that you could use. And yep. that's got, uh, you can just look it up on the website. Um, so if you just punch in pro Reno, you'll get to the website, but very easy. And um, I don't know if you were going to say it, but I, what I tell patients and what they really like, uh, I have people, I have the hospital in which I'm sitting now, their outpatient pharmacy carries it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it's not at just sitting on a shelf somewhere. Um, but the benefit of ordering through the company is free home delivery. So, uh, you know, if your bill is $30 for the 90 day bottles, your charge is $30. It's not, you know, thirty six ninety five because they dropped it in a box and, you know, yep. mailed it for 50 cents. So, <laughs> Uh, it's free shipping, uh, comes right to your door, and then you don't have to um, shop around. For those of your listeners that say, well, I want to go to Walgreens, I want to go to CVS, because I do have a couple patients like that. Mm -hmm. If you go in with the name, they'll be able to find it and get oh. it to you, but you won't. Um, it won't be quite the same price. You'll spend a little more money. And I've pointed that out to a couple patients who said, I don't care. I want to get everything from Walgreens. So um, that's okay. If that's what you want to do, uh, pretty much any pharmacy can get it for you, but the home delivery from the company itself, uh, is hands down the best way to go for convenience and for savings. Yep. And, no um, just to let everyone know, we do have the pro renal team logged in on the Facebook channel and they're seeing a lot of the comments. I don't know if they're seeing all the comments that are coming across YouTube. So I'm going to try to, um, uh, post a couple of these up on the screen so that they can write an answer and then I'll pop it up on the screen for people. They're helping with all the technical stuff. Um, Liz was asking, what's it called? Yeah, Pro Renal Plus D. And yeah, here we go. There's the company name. I always. Oh, should be a P in there. Nephro. Nephro. Oh, and, and look who wrote it. <laughs> See, it's up, uh, in the Oh, well, they said, they said they're the on name. YouTube also. Very good. And a few people are saying your YouTube is cutting out. Um, I did get a report that there are some storms somewhere in the U.S. and some parts are having some problems with the storm. Uh, if you're having problems in your area on YouTube, jump over to Facebook. And it's streaming right there also. Facebook is not reporting any issues right now. I'm looking at all the data. Um, only YouTube is having a few spots where they are having some problems right now. 
And it's just this time of year with all that weather. So let's talk about vitamin D. That's an important one. That's the big old plus D right here in Pro Renal Plus D. Why is vitamin D important to kidney patients? Uh, well, vitamin D is important for everybody. Uh, it's quite common, especially for those of us like in the northern half of the country like we are. Um, you tend to not get enough D uh, because of sunlight. Um, so most of us get uh, kind of low on D anyway. Your, in, your whole body uses vitamin D, uh, so that's important. Most CKD patients get uh, D deficient. Um, and so for someone without chronic kidney disease, you know, the normal... Uh, recommended vitamin D dose is, you know, 400 to 600, maybe 800, depending. For a CKD patient, you want at least 1,000 uh, units of uh, vitamin D per day. So most vitamins that you grab off the shelf, like we were talking about, won't have 1,000 units of D in it. Um, and uh, so um, ProRenal has 1,000 of D, which is the recommended for CKD patients. Vitamin D is important uh, for two reasons. One, like I said, your whole body needs D. So when you get D deficient, it affects all your organs. Some people feel like uh, vitamin D can help prevent certain types of cancers. You know, these are all things that have come out in small studies. Um, but um, vitamin D has been linked to a lot of positive benefits, whether it's trying to potentially prevent a cancer or improving cardiovascular health or improving your immune system. Specifically to a kidney disease patient, uh, there is a... Um, difficult to describe and laborious and boring for most of your listeners uh, process where <laughs> vitamin, the short version is vitamin D is supposed to get converted in the kidney mm -hmm. to an, a different type of D. I won't yeah, bore you with active the, D di or that's at least what I've D. always heard it as. It's, it's right. So it, it gets this significant kind of active D who's that active D's job is to come up to the parathyroids. You have your thyroid that everyone knows about mm -hmm. in your uh, neck, and then you've got usually four little glands um, called the parathyroids. Para just means next to. So these poor glands didn't even get a name. They just got named <laughs> next to the thyroid. It's so, like Malibu adjacent. Yes, yes. So um, they were an afterthought, but they are not because the parathyroids, their job is to help control the flow of calcium in and out of the bones. Mm -hmm. So the parathyroid... Uh, is quite important in that sense in terms of keeping healthy bones. And so when you get low on D and or if you have enough D, but your kidney function is such that you don't activate enough of the vitamin D, you then start to get hyperparathyroidism or too, you know the parathyroid glands just get too active. And when the parathyroid glands get too active, the two major issues that come about is one, it, it worsens your cardiovascular health which again goes back to the whole link between the kidneys and the heart. Yep. And two, more importantly, even at lower levels uh, of, or lesser degrees of hyperparathyroidism, you do get uh, weakened bones and you do have, um, you're an increased fracture risk, which for a lot of our patients is a huge deal. So that's the main issue with vitamin D and why it's so important. Yeah. Now, are there any natural sources of vitamin D? Well, there are. I mean, you can... Uh, eat D in, um, you know, any form that you want. I know a lot of juices will have a D supplement, milk, mm. things like that. Oh, that's Typically, right. <laughs> I, I'm sitting here thinking like, I can't think of any, I'm sure it's yeah. in a lot of stuff. Yes. The yeah. good and milk, then, you know, different the red one. <laughs> whatnot. But you know, the problem with milk and CKD patients, since we're bringing it up, your dietitians out there would be, would, uh, they don't want me to push milk. Uh, milk is also high in phosphorus. So a lot of the things that might have D might also have a lot of calcium and phosphorus. Um, and it's very hard to keep your D up, uh, any kind of D with ingestion. You know, as uh, humans, we get D from sunlight absorption mm -hmm. is uh, one of our main sources. And again, that's why a lot of the northern hemisphere countries and northern Europeans and anywhere where the sun, uh, you don't get as much of the sunshine, uh, tend to have a higher uh, degree of uh, or a higher percentage of D deficiency. Yeah, and I'm kind of one of those super duper nerdy guys. Um, it's shocking that I'm not living in my parents' basement. I don't get much vitamin D from the sun and stuff like that outside. <laughs> you will on your run today. Yes. Getting your exercise. I, now the Another weather kid. is great. I am going to be out there and I am going to be listening to some great old country music and just enjoying it. 
So Excellent. we have a regular I recognize. Um, she says she was told D enlarged her heart. Is that something that's true? And I'm not sure who told her that. Is that something that can happen? Um, that I have never heard. There is such a thing as too much vitamin D. Um, it's rare. It's hard to get because you, you know, you have to ingest a lot of vitamin D to mm -hmm. do so. Um, uh, but that's associated more with calcification, you know, stone, kidney stones, um, some GI issues. I have, haven't heard about enlarging your heart, certainly, uh, in terms of, um, regular ingestion of D so regular supplementation. So short of getting what we call hypervitaminosis D, uh, that wouldn't be a problem. And all this stuff is a good reason to stay in touch with your nephrologist, or if you've got early chronic kidney disease, it's, we really push the primaries to refer to us early. Yep. Some primary physicians wait and wait and wait and like, oh, you're getting close oh, yeah. to dialysis, go see the kidney doctor. Well, there's a lot we could have been working on. And a lot of these things we're discussing, James, is a, yep. is a stuff that we would check at least once a year, maybe twice a year. But, you know, I'd be able to check your phosphorus. We'd look at calcium, which... Calcium isn't as important in terms of the serum marker, but the parathyroid that I just brought up, mm -hmm. you'd check that and we'd follow your D level. So someone, um, was it Diana, I think was the name. Yep. And if she, she has a, vitamin, yeah, we have another good D question after this. Yeah. You're going to love. If, <laughs> if she's taking too much D, uh, a regular visit and a regular D level uh, once a year would help manage those expectations and make sure that she wasn't getting too much. Yep. Now here's one that I know you are probably one of the best people to give insight on this. Someone said they heard on the news that people with COVID are low in vitamin D. Uh, Is there any, hard. any connection there? I know you've, you've seen patients with COVID. Yeah. Our area is quite, has been quite hot with COVID. It's calmer now and sort of picking back up, but we really got hit hard at the start. That would be a hard link for me. Uh, there's so many people that are D deficient um, that you might say, oh, let's look at all the people that are really sick in the hospital and look at their D levels and they're really low. And you might say, OK, there's a link that, you know, 80 percent of these hospitalized patients with COVID are low. The problem is you'd really have to take all these asymptomatic patients out there that either have had COVID and no symptoms or minimal symptoms or didn't even know they had it. Look yep. at their D levels because vitamin D deficiency is so prevalent uh, in society that that would be a hard one for me. I would say personally, the biggest thing that we've seen here with COVID is um, obviously everyone in the hospital has had something. Most pro most people, um, what they've had in common and what a lot of us think the biggest factor is, is obesity. The patients that are having the worst outcomes around us at least and you know in the hospital that are getting the sickest most of them have been overweight and usually not just your classic like oh you know i i need to lose 10 pounds but you know obese medically yeah. obese kind of so, what you would so like a bmi 35 and above perhaps yes, exactly i fall in that category oh <laughs> but i social distance and i I don't go places, so. <laughs> but I'm and I'm working on the weight. I'm working on that. That's right. Um, it's a con it's it's constant for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with all the the staying at home. My wife is now buying snacks like crazy, and the kids are here, so they're all laying out. And I walk by, and he's like, "Oh, I'll just take a little bit, then again a little bit." And then the kids are like, "Dad, where'd all my cookies go?" And I'm like, yeah. "Oh, I didn't eat that. Well, I guess I did." <laughs> Um, are there symptoms if your D is low that you can kind of tell besides going in and getting your, your labs checked? Are there things we should be watching out for? No, not really. I, um, I, you know, again, if you wanted to tie any kind of symptoms in with D, that would be difficult. Um, so nothing that I could, uh, think of, um, maybe if you were extremely low, but for people that are the normal, usually we want your vitamin D level over 30. Mm -hmm. Most times you check people there, you know. 10 to 30. Uh, you do get people that are normal. Most of them are already on a supplement. Um, but even patients that come in and, you know, their D's less than four or something, you know, they don't, wow. they're like, oh, you know, I, I feel good. So that's yep. the problem with a lot of this. And another reason to kind of get your regular checkups and regular involvement is because a lot of what we do as nephrologists are to manage the blood test and monitor the blood test 
because that really gives us a lot of information about your kidney and all the stuff we were discussing is what you call secondary manifestations of the CKD. Yeah, and my 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 main doctor. So I kind of have I have a team, and I kind of set mine up like a uh, like a football team. I'm a huge Seattle Seahawks fan because I used to live there, and I have my Russell Wilson, my quarterback, and then all the others, and they all work together. But that one doctor calls all the shots, and he wants my D. 50 to 80 in the, in the labs. And, and he's always focused on the D now I'm sure it's because of the heart problems I've had, my obesity and everything else. Um, but I know he keeps an eye on my D that's one of the things he's really focused on. Um, and he's been focused on that the entire time that I've been improving. And, uh, so I know it's extremely important. Let's well, say, and since we've talked a lot about D for your listeners out there, uh-huh. you know, Vitamin D is different. It's a um, fat-soluble vitamin versus these other vitamins that everyone talks about, the Bs and Cs and whatnot, that are water-soluble. So if you want to go crazy and take, you know, 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C, you know, your body takes that, you know, 60 or 120 milligrams at once, and you just urinate out the rest. Uh, Vitamin D can be stored. So um, oh. that's why sometimes people will look and be like, what dose do I take? You know, a thousand a day is the daily recommended. That's just to kind of keep you in the maintenance. So someone, yep. I tell people that all the time, someone, I might see them, they might start pro renal, but their vitamin D level is 15. Well, we'll get them on the pro renal with a thousand a day to kind of keep them at maintenance, but then they're going to need something to get them from 15, you know, up back to normal. And that's why sometimes you'll get these 50,000 unit capsules of D2 yeah. or 10,000. I take unit 250 international units a week and it keeps me at the 50. Um, if I stop taking it, my D, I don't know why it, and I don't care. <laughs> I, I got it under control. It, it seems to drop pretty quickly. Yeah. So they have me on that. Yeah. Um, and it's different. I have people that need the 50,000 once a week. Sometimes they do that for a couple months. Their D gets nice and high. They switch to like a 50,000 once a month. Uh to help supplement because your body can store that 50,000 and that's why you can get away with taking it once a week, once a month, something like that. Yep. Let me see what other questions I had on here. So here's a common question I get asked. um, Do you know of any issues like interactions or anything with taking pro renal plus D, you know, taking a multivitamin? You cut out there. Do I? Are there any issues with taking pro renal? Yeah. Any any interactions or concerns that people need to be careful of, like such as you're on blood pressure medicine. Um, are those concerns? Uh, typically not. No. When we're in the hospital, every once in a while, I'll get uh, the pharmacies are nice. They've got these um, uh, alerts that come up, and there's a couple antibiotics out there um, that really ha- have um, some specific timing issues and and what you don't want to uh, take with them. So sometimes I'll get an alert like, hey, you know, you don't do this vitamin, you know, within two hours of uh, a couple different antibiotics. But other than that, in terms of just a specific thing, uh, for the most part, no, there's not going to be any interaction or any kind of absorption issues with other types of medicines. Um, Anyone taking medicines that have to be um, measured and followed uh, typically they will always want to double check their new medicines. So if you're on warfarin or if you're on a transplant medicine, anything where a level is followed, um, you do want to, uh, either ask your physician, uh, show them the bottle and say, you know, do you think I should time this differently? Or if you're not sure and you have one of those important medicines, just, you just don't take them together. So if you always take your warfarin in the morning, um, you know, take your pro renal at lunch or dinner or your transplant, you know, just take your pro renal away from there. If you want to be safe and you're like, well, I'm not asking anybody, what if they don't know, just don't take them together. But other than, other than a rare occasion like that, there's going to be no problems taking your vitamin along with your blood pressure pills, um, diabetic medications, things like that. Yeah. I take mine every morning. I get up and I open up my cupboard. I pull out a full thing of water out of the fridge. And one of the tricks I do, cause I got to drink a lot of water because of my BMI is a little bit on the high side. Every pill, I pop one pill in and I take a sip for it. I don't double them up. 
because that I, it helps me get some water started in the day, getting it in there. Good idea. I, yeah, I take though I take my Prorenal Plus D, my other pills, you know, blood pressure medication um, in the morning, and I am all set. And I don't eat breakfast. I don't get an upset stomach. I I kind of I do a somewhat intermittent fasting. I eat at noon, and then I finish eating by six p.m. Um, and I've kind of gotten into that schedule and that flow, and it works great for me. And I haven't had any issues. But one thing I definitely want to emphasize for everyone out there: um, the one with the omega three. A lot of those omega pills, those fish oil pills, oh, they give you the burps, and they're nasty burps. I do not get that at all with whatever their source of omega three is in here. No burps, no awful fishy taste or anything like that. And I am not a fish person. So here's a question. Oh, wait, somebody just asked something. Let's see. Um, how about prescribed phosphorus blockers? Oh, um, they're asking, do you know of any interactions with prescribed phosphorus blockers? Um, uh, no. Um, for one, you know, I guess if you're taking calcium, which hopefully you're not, um, yeah. Anyway, but there's no calcium in the pro-renal to interfere. There is a tiny, tiny bit of iron in pro-renal, not much at all. And that was by design. You know, a lot of CKD patients are iron deficient. Mm -hmm. I'm but, one of them. Yeah, but you, you know, not everyone can take oral iron. Uh, it becomes very binding and constipating. So <laughs> oh, iron, I've been there. Iron is, uh, iron is better to be uh, um, something that's completely separate from. Uh, your multivitamin. Um, and that's another reason, you know, to follow with your um, nephrologist because we have IV iron in a lot of the offices that we can give. Or if you really get anemic, uh, but your iron's good, we can move on to an injection called Epigen or mm -hmm. Epo for short. Um, but no, if you're on a, uh, a phosphorus binder, um, it would bind to phosphorus and there's none in pro-renal. So mm -hmm. you, if you're taking a phosphorus binder, um, and for those that are on it, that are listening, you know, just the reminder, you only take those with food because that's how they work. They only work on food to bind up phosphorus so that you can absorb it. Um, and that's one way we help control phosphorus. So if you're on a phosphorus binder, you could take your phosphorus binder and pro renal at the same time. And again, if you just are like, I don't want to take the chance, then don't take your pro renal with meals. Take it, you know you know, before, you know, middle of the day, however you want to do it, bedtime. Um, but from the phosphorus binders I know and what's in pro renal, you're not going to have an issue of, because the main concern is, you know, either one causing risk to something and making something get too high, which wouldn't be the yep. case. Your concern more would he, uh, is, I think based on the question is, Hey, are they going to cancel each other out? Like is one going to bind to the other? And now I'm just taking stuff that's bound together and I don't get the effects, but that's, um, that's not how it works. So you're not going to bind up anything in the pro renal. Yep. So another question for you, and this uh, I like. Here's a, this one. Um, looking for some recommendations. So is there anything that you wish all kidney patients either knew or really understood that could help them with living with chronic kidney disease? Um, a lot of it's just the basics. I think uh, most people understand, like everything else in life, uh, like where you were when you started your journey. Um, you knew you weren't eating well and exercising enough, and you knew your weight wasn't healthy, um, but it was. That's where it was. So yep. most patients would walk into my office, and if I said, hey, do you know controlling your blood pressure is really important and maybe the number one thing for you? They would say, yeah. But, you know, then when they walk out of my office and they're at home and someone says, hey, you know, do you want wings and pizza tonight? Or, you know, hey, we're, we're eating wings and pizza. Are you eating your salad? You know, that's your that's your battle is more of, you know, the high salt diet, you know, or missing your medicines, things like that. So uh, the number one thing would just be consistency, uh, mm -hmm. taking your medicines. Um you know, that's hard for me to say because I'm not the most consistent person with my schedule. Um, and so I understand the struggle. Um, but there's really, when we sit down with patients, um, there's, there's four really important things that we, um, go through with patients that are the key to really slowing down the progression of CKD. And that's to control your blood pressure, 
control your blood sugars if you have sugar issues, and control your cholesterol. The worse those three things are, the faster chronic kidney disease tends to progress, as in progress in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And the better those three things are controlled, then typically the slower the progression. Now, obviously, there's a few exceptions. Uh, and then the fourth thing is to uh, talk to your doctor about whether you take an ACE inhibitor or what's called an ARB, something similar. So for the listeners, you know, the ACEs are anything that sounds like Pril, like lisinopril, enalapril, ramapril, and then the ARBs are like Cozar, Losartan, Olmosartan, Valsartan, stuff that sounds like that. Those are blood pressure pills that have a special property that help protect the kidneys. Um, and so they're really an essential part of chronic kidney disease um, treatment. So I guess uh, to answer that question, I, my one most important thing would be for anyone out there with CKD to know whether they're on an ACE or ARB. And if not, then why? Because some people don't tolerate them. You know, we don't have to get into mm -hmm. all that. There's different side effects and um, some people have tried and failed. And that's also very important to know so they don't get, you know, put back on them. Yeah, I know um, I was, was the, on Lasartan or, or whichever, however it's pronounced. Now I don't know if I'm on anything that ends in the Stan or the Prin right now. I take so many. I feel like yeah. my blood pressure pills. Well, see, there you go. Something to check out. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they work best if you have protein in the urine. So it, you might have an abnormal creatinine from prior damage or something like that and not have protein in the urine. Um, so if you don't have protein in the urine, the, the studies are a little more, uh, a little more gray in terms of do they help as much. But if you have protein in your urine, there's study after study after study that shows an ACE inhibitor or ARB will delay progression of disease. Yep. Awesome. Now here's someone that just asked, does, <laughs> I don't want to pronounce the name, lisinopril? protect Lysinopril, your kidneys yeah, that's, that ends in pril so it falls in that group Lysinopril, yeah so that's one of that's an ace inhibitor so yes it does um and just to get a little more advanced into it it's not everyone is on it because some what it does the way it protects your kidneys um is it drops the blood pressure in your kidney mm -hmm. so if you're someone that's progressed well like you and has gotten your pressure under control and your pressure is you know 110 over 60 you know well starting lisinopril for you they might you know, then you might check your labs and your creatinine is bumped and you say, well, you know, this is supposed to be a good drug for me. Sometimes it's that protective action that might make your creatinine worse. So maybe you were taken off Losartan or Lisinopril at the time when your creatinine clear, you know, when you were in stage five. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the example, the best way that uh, uh, example that I walk patients through that everyone seems to grasp is that imagine, you know, your kidney's got about a million filters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like a strainer, you know, blood flow, blood comes through, gets strained through the kidneys um, and you go from there. Well, lisinopril, you know, so those strainers are the key part of your kidney and but high pressure damages the strainer. So like if you're straining, you know, it's pasta night at, at your house and you're yep. straining the pasta under the sink. Well, if you want to be most efficient, you crank that water up, correct? Yep. The most efficient way to strain. Well, same thing with your kidneys. Some people can keep their kidney function down even with hypertension because they've got that high pressure going through there. The problem is that pressure damages the strainer. Yep. So taking lisinopril or losartan is like walking up to the faucet and, you know, turning it down. Uh, halfway, you know, 20%, something like that. Well, so now your kidneys might work a little less efficiently. So that's why they check your labs to see if you tolerated it. But now you've protected the strainer. Yeah. So that's, that's the whole concept behind them and why some people can't always tolerate them depending on what their GFR is. Yeah, so I, I should probably talk to my doctor and see if maybe it's time to change my medication for my blood pressure. Uh, it's not as low as it could be. I, I'm still in the like 120s over 80 something. Um, the the bottom never gets below 80. It'll get close to it. Yeah. Um, and that top number, good. it's in the 120s usually. Yeah. And that's Sexual. with that's with quite a bit of pills. <laughs> well, it, um, you know, as a nephrologist, we, you know, the ACE, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, they're a, they're a cornerstone for managing chronic kidney disease. So if you're listening and you're not on one, you know, there might be a good reason, you know, some mm -hmm. people don't tolerate it because the potassium gets high. So not everyone can take one. 
there's actually new potassium binders out on the market now that are really trying to grab hold and to help all those patients uh, that need an ACE inhibitor or ARB because the ACEs and ARBs, they protect your heart muscle as well. So they're fantastic drugs. Yep. Um, they're the only type of blood pressure pill that can prevent your uh, heart muscle from hypertrophying or you know getting bigger. So um, these potassium binders are on the market specifically. They're really pushing, at least when they walk in our offices, to say, hey, this might get those patients that couldn't tolerate an ACE or ARB for their heart or kidneys uh, because of high potassium. Now maybe yep. give them this binder so they can get the positive benefits of the drug. And then, you know, as a as a corollary to what else you would want to know, from those big four steps, there's a, there's a lot more that we get into. Um, and the secondary things then come like some of the stuff we've talked about. You know, you want your D up, you want your parathyroid normal, you want to try and treat your anemia as best you can. Mm -hmm. The micronutrient supplementation, like with pro renal, is a big part. Uh, and then from there, then you get into just more the the tier behind that is just anything else that you think you need for your health, you know, whether it's getting your uric acid down or you want to take your co enzyme Q10 or, you know, keep, you know, work on your weight with uh, uh, and your gut with the probiotics, stuff like that. So we try and, you know, when I meet a patient, we try and just go down those tiers and just say, all right, let's get the main things covered first. Now let's talk about how we can really get your best well-rounded treatment um, and then patients from there, we go with the specific questions like a lot of your listeners are very great yep. question. Too. And that's exactly what my doctor did or my team. Um, of course, I'm, I'm out of the hospital one day and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I actually did ask, okay, I want my creatinine normal. I want this normal, this normal. I want it in two weeks. What do we got to do? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. no, 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 no. Let's focus on some things. Some of my labs were all over the place. Uh, they're like, let's get them all. Let's work getting them within the standard range. We got them all in the standard range. And then some are like, okay, now we're going to work on this and we're going to try to get closer. Instead of being a borderline, we're going to start getting this in closer. We're going to get your A1C looking better. We don't want you right. to be pre diabetic anymore. Let's get this down. And we just kind of conquered each thing one at a time. And what was really cool about it is I saw the progress. I got right. to at least see the labs and go, ah, oh, I did it. All right, now let's move on to the next thing. Right. And eventually symptoms started disappearing. And anemia is one of the most difficult for me to get rid of because uh, it was oh, so severe for me. Um, but eventually I got that under control and now my labs outside of my BUN, which I have trouble keeping it down. I kind of, I, I notice that I go out and if I eat a ribeye, yeah, it goes up. <laughs> and I try not yeah. to do that right before getting labs. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I try to stick with plant based for at least a week before labs to get my BUN closer to normal. But then my creatinine are the two that I really can't get back to normal. And I understand my creatinine will never get back to normal from where I was. But everything else of mine is right in the middle of the standard ranges. And I am so happy with that. Now, every time I get my lap, all the green, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing low, nothing high except those two items. Yeah. Well, and BUN is more diet-based and volume-based. So that's why when the, the nephrologists, we always talk about the creatinine because it's just the best number. There's other factors that go in and the formulas we use to calculate how good your kidneys work do factor in a couple of things. But Creatinine is the key because that gives us the best, you know, no nonsense indicator because your creatinine isn't affected by your diet like the BUN is. Lots of stuff goes into the BUN. So mm -hmm. it's a little factor, but um, but yeah, you're, you know, you're clearly a well-educated patient that knows, you know, eating more meat will drive up that BUN. Oh, and it it's like almost instant. If I, I, I'm pretty certain I've never done this test. But I'm pretty certain that if I went like right now and got labs and then I went to dinner tonight, went to a steakhouse, got labs tomorrow, my BUN would probably be like 15, 20 points higher than it is right yeah. now. And I have not eaten meat until or since oh, I think it was last Thursday. It's been a long time. <laughs> We had, we had a show on Sunday and I was talking about, I'm going to get me a ribeye tomorrow for lunch because the family's gone. They came back. I never made it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, you missed your window. Yeah, I've been vegan since last Thursday. <laughs> 
And, and, and let me tell you, before all of this for my kidney problems, the only vegetables I got were toppings. That was it. Yeah. They're like, would you like a salad? No, can I substitute that for a loaded baked potato with extra butter and sour cream and bacon? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's hard to get covered, but you've mentioned it a couple of times. It's not available to everybody, but, you know, it's hard to learn. Even as physicians, you know, we the stuff we learn about with a lot of these vitamins that John and I have talked about and the mm-hmm. diet dietary stuff, you know, I don't mean this to sound bad like they don't care. But, you know, um, we don't learn a ton about that in medical school because you are so focused on diseases, disease yeah. processes, the medication, what to treat, how to find it, what not to do, that a lot of the health maintenance stuff like diet and vitamins and supplements, you know, it gets talked about. I mean, obviously, you know, doctors don't run around and be like, what's cholesterol? You know, what do you mean? You know, but so we have the basics down, but in terms of like the things that work, like you brought up, um, things that I've read about, but all on the side, you know, intermittent fasting, plant-based diet, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that, you know, is making its way into our journals and things like that. Um, So it gets addressed and and things like that, but it is not a core part of our training. So it's really a good idea for all patients like you, you know, you, everyone's different. You know what works for you. You know, um, I like, most people probably listening, you know, I'm trying to lose, I'm, I got my camera set so you can't see my belly and you're like, you know, I got, I'm trying to lose. Let me tell you, the whole audience out here thinks I'm a whole lot thinner than I am. Not only do I never let them see my belly, but if I look straight, that's here. I lift the camera up because this right here disappears. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, everyone out there is trying to lose the same, you know, 10, 20 pounds or more. And, you know, you find out what works and you kind of read about it. I, I, I tried wheat belly for a while. The wheat belly diet is fantastic. Intermittent fasting, like you brought up, yep. it works well for me. You know, I tried keto. No good. Felt terrible. Um, wasn't losing weight. Uh, and it's just a good way to, you know, everyone needs to learn a little bit about themselves. So it is important to get to the doctor know your medicines, have these discussions, know your labs. Um, but it's also, you know, everyone's got to find out what works for them. And, you know, a little dietary education goes a long way. Uh, and it'd be something if you're really confused, there's a ton of stuff out there. It's a good thing to ask your doctor and say, hey, you know, does my insurance cover meeting a dietitian? You know, can I just, it's not like you're someone you got to meet once a week, you know, go once, right. you know, go twice, something like that. Yeah, and and I haven't seen my dietitian in a long time, probably since November of last year. So wow, it's almost approaching a, a month. But I learned things from her, and you just implement those. And then I use an app to track my food. I also use an app to remind me of my my pills. It's a free app. It even bugs me on my watch if I don't tell it I yeah. took them. Um, but yeah, that that yeah. all that. Everything I've learned from about food and what to eat, at least for me, all came from working with a renal dietitian. And I got very lucky. My doctor, they found ways to get it covered by my insurance. First, I had, you know, I was obese. Um, I was gaining weight. And, and I kind of fibbed in the beginning. I said, yeah, doctor, I'm trying to diet, but it keeps coming on. I, I know he knew I was lying. Because yeah. <laughs> if I really was dieting and not eating much, it comes off. <laughs> we we usually know, you know, uh, physicians are kind of like mothers in that sense. It's like, you know, did you take your blood pressure medicine today? Yeah, I don't know what's wrong. I took it. And I'm like, you know, your blood pressure is 200 over 120. I'm pretty sure you didn't. Exactly. And then, you know, someone like that comes into the hospital, you give them two pills and they're 120 over 70. So it's, again, you're almost like a parent at that point. Like, see what happens when you take your medicine and you eat correctly. Yep. So, so we are at the top of the hour. Is there any last words of advice you'd like to offer um, those out out here? You've offered so much. Uh, you know, I want to definitely thank you for everything that you've told us so far. And you even mentioned things that were new to me, which is fantastic. And I'm going to check on my blood pressure medications with my regular doctor and see if maybe it's time to tweak them a little bit more uh, and you know, protect my kidneys more now that my GFR is higher. 
But any last words of wisdom? Uh, no, I would just, just um, you know, just nice and boring. Just stay, uh, stay in touch with your doctor. Um, you know, know your medicines. If you're the kind of patient that doesn't take a list with you or doesn't know, you know, you really should because you never know when you're going to meet a new doctor. Because uh, so many people, uh, they they feel like it's uh, life sort of like Star Trek. It's like, hey, have you ever been on this? Like, I don't know. Isn't it in my chart? I'm like, it's your first time here. I, you know, <laughs> there's no magic wand that just buzzes over you. So um, uh, from a patient standpoint, I would just say, you know, just you don't have to get educated about everything we talked about today. You should get educated on yourself. You should be your best advocate. Cause as you were telling me with your story, you know, before we got on James, you know, you learned a lot and you ask a lot of questions and oh, that's the yeah. great way to do it. You know, we love as physicians when people come in and really want to have a discussion. Now, you know, any discussion that starts with, well, I read on the internet, you know, you're like, okay, oh. where's this going? It can be good. <laughs> it, as you know, it can be just a, a hot mess of questions, but oh, yes. I guess my final piece of advice would just be educate, uh, ed, you know, get educated about yourself and your medicines, your diet, find out what's works with you and work with your doctor. And you can, the more you do so, the more you will get into this approach of like, all right, I got the big things covered. What are all these little things I can do that to just kind of slowly get better and better. And it seems overwhelming, but like you said, James, you know, you just do one thing at a time. And uh, like we tell our kids, you know, every great journey and big journey or hard journey, you know, everything starts with a single step. You know, you just got to you just got to get moving forward. And from there, it, it will flow. Yep. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time and remind everyone out there that the makers of Pro Reno Plus D are doing a giveaway. We're going to do a giveaway for 14 days straight. Share this broadcast. Share it on Facebook. Share it wherever you are. If you know someone that's got kidney disease or has someone in their family with kidney disease, share them this and tag it. Hashtag my pro renal. And every day I'm going to look out on the internet. I got tools here for looking for that hashtag. And if you shared this video, you are entered in and we're going to pick people and we're paying the shipping and everything and getting you a full month supply. We're doing it for 14 days in a row. Thanks to the people behind pro renal plus D. And other than that, everybody, I want to thank you all for being here with us today. Uh, we got lots of great thank yous, Doc, here. <laughs> People are very happy. People said they've taken a lot of notes, that they've learned a lot today from us. All right, everybody, I will be back tomorrow and then again on Friday as we wrap up Dadvice TV's Kidney Health Week. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a great rest of your day.